All right, children, welcome back to class. I'm going to go over your quiz from yesterday real quick. So first thing we're going to do is number one. I would suggest on every single one of these questions, you start by drawing your graph. I know you might think that you already know this stuff and it's easy and you can do it in your head, but the graph will allow you to visualize and make sure that you're, you're understanding exactly what you did. When students don't draw graphs, and ask for help with these problems, what I tend to see is they say the right thing, but then they don't pick the right answer. Like they'll say demand increases, which should lead to an increase in price, but they end up saying demand increased and the price went down. So you need to draw the graph to make sure that you're showing what's going on. All right, number one says, which of the following will result in an increased price of milk? So which of the following will result in an increased price of milk? First thing you need to do is think. There are two ways that prices can go up. One is if demand shifts to the right. If demand shifts to the right, that would be demand increasing. So that would be a demand increase. Okay, the other way that we could have the price go up, there's only one other way for price to go up so far. And that would be for supply to decrease. If supply decreases, it would shift to the left and the price would go up there. And so you need either or happening. You need either demand to increase or supply to decrease. So let's look at the answer choices. A says an increase in the production technology of milk suppliers. If we get better, if we get better technology, in the production of milk, it will get easier to make milk, which will cause the supply curve to, of milk to increase and shift to the left. That would be opposite of what we want. So we can get rid of that answer choice. A can't be right. Uh, letter B, a shift to the right of the supply curve for milk. That's the same thing we just said. If the supply curve shifts to the right, that's an increase and we need a decrease of the supply curve. So that can't be correct either. For C, a decrease in the number of milk buyers. If there was a decrease in the amount of milk buyers, that would cause demand to decrease and shift to the left, which is opposite of what we want to happen. Remember, we need either demand to increase or supply to decrease. And so C can be, can be counted off too. You can't do that one. Letter D, an increase in the number of milk suppliers. If there are more suppliers, aka more businesses producing milk, then the supply for milk is going to shift to the right and increase. And again, that's opposite of what we want happening to supply. And so the correct answer has to be D, uh, sorry, E, a shift to the right of the demand curve for milk, which a shift to the right is an increase in demand. So that is the correct answer. All right, next we'll go down and look at number two. Oh my goodness. So with number two, if steak and potatoes are complements, so first of all, it just told us that these two goods are complements. And if they're complements, then this has to do with demand. So steak and potatoes are complements. Let's set up our graph first. Price, quantity. All right, if steak and potatoes are complements, when the price of steak goes up, the demand curve for potatoes. All right, so this is gonna be a graph for potatoes because it's asking us what happens to potatoes when the price, when the price of steak goes up. So if the price of steak goes up, we aren't going to be purchasing as much steak. The quantity demanded for steak will decrease and we'll no longer be buying steak. And so if that happens, are we going to be buying potatoes to go with the steak that we're no longer eating? No. The demand for potatoes is going to shift to the left. If potatoes and meat go together, potatoes and steak go together, and now steak is prohibitively expensive and we're not going to buy it, then we're also not going to buy the potatoes that we would tend to eat with it. So what happens here? We have a decrease in the price of potatoes and a decrease in the quantity of potatoes that are being bought and sold. Remember, think of this corner down here as being zero. So price increases as you go up, decreases as you go down. Quantity increases as you go outward to the right and decreases as you come back into the left. So let's look at what the correct answer has to be. 
Uh, so the demand curve for potatoes is going to be C, shifts to the right. I, I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> the demand curve for potatoes is going to be E, it shifts to the left. There's going to be a shift to the left in uh, potatoes. Obviously, I, I believe y'all's answers are scrambled, so yours might not be in the exact order, so it might not be the exact letter. But if you look here, you can figure it out from the corresponding answer. All right, let's move on to number three. All right, number three says, a decrease in the price of eggs will result in blank. Okay, so remember, this one confuses my students relatively frequently. Yoink, so we got our price and we got our quantity. Okay, and this is a market for eggs. And we're seeing that there's a decrease in the price of eggs. If eggs become cheaper, remember, a change in price is not going to cause a shift of either curve. If a, if a demand curve shifts, then something outside of price, something other than price, caused people to want to purchase more or less, depending on if it increases or decreases. Again, if the supply curve shifts, it has to be something other than a change in price, which will cause us to uh, supply more of this product or less. So when price changes, you're literally just moving along the curve. The curve is made up of price and quantity. So like, remember, think of each of these dots, each point on here as how much we want to buy and how much so, so for the demand curve, it's how many we want to buy, the quantity that we demand, based on each price. So at this price, we demand uh, 100. At this price down here, we demand 120. And so as the price level, uh, as the price decreases, quantity demanded is going to increase. When prices go down, we want to buy more. However, for producers, as the price decreases, quantity supply decreases as well because there isn't that profit incentive. Profit incentive is what makes the curve slope upward. As prices go up, a business wants to produce more because they can make more money at that time. So as price goes down, the opposite happens. There's less of an incentive to produce. So why am I gonna make, uh, why am I gonna produce all these eggs if I'm only making like a dollar a box of eggs, a dollar a carton? So hopefully that makes sense. And so what we would have here then, uh, anything that says an increase in the supply of, or a decrease in the supply of, or an increase in the demand of, or a decrease in the demand of, cannot be right because this is price changing, not something outside of price. So the only thing that can end up being correct is a downward movement along the supply curve of eggs. If the price of eggs decreases, then the quantity supplied is going to decrease because there's no incentive to produce more. All right, now let's look at number four. On number four, yoink, yoink. All right, on number four, we have, sorry, just a second. On number four, suppose the input cost associated with manufacturing hair replacement medication decreases over time. All right, so input costs associated with hair replacement therapy. I'm just gonna label this graph hair drugs. All right, input costs. Input costs are the price of things. Inputs are the things that you need to buy in order to produce a product. So inputs are going to be associated with supply. And so if we have a decrease in the input cost, that means whatever chemicals or whatever that this drug is made out of are now cheaper. If those chemicals are cheaper, then it's going to become easier to produce this product. The supply curve then is going to shift to the right because it's going to increase because now it costs less to buy all the materials we need so we can make more of it for the same amount of money. So what happens here is that your price is going to decrease because there's more available on the shelf and your quantity is moving out to the right so that's an increase. Price comes down, quantity increases, um, and so what you end up with is an increase in the supply of such treatments, lower prices, and an increase in the equilibrium quantity. So on mine, that's E, but I'm not sure what it is on yours. 
And then finally number five. Let's come on down to number five. Oh my goodness. Whee! Number five. Number five says we're looking at competing motorcycle firms. They compete. All right, what's another word for competing? Oh wow, you guessed it. I feel like Dora the Explorer here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you figured it out. If they're competing, another word for that is substitute. But no, not like the thing that you would never, ever, ever want in this class because I'm so great. Uh, this is going to be substitutes as in you buy one instead of the other. And so Harley-Davidson is changing prices and we're graphing out Honda then. Okay, these are substitutes, they're competing goods. The price of Harley-Davidson's have increased. They're raising prices. What will happen to Honda? Well, if Harley-Davidson raises their prices and I'm in the market for a motorcycle, I'm more likely to go buy the Honda which now feels comparatively cheaper. So if the price of their competitor, Harley-Davidson, increases, well then, the demand curve for the Honda is gonna to increase too. More people are gonna buy it because it's not gonna feel expensive anymore compared to the higher price Harley-Davidson. So your demand curve increases, shifts to the right, you end up with a higher price and an increase in the quantity being bought and sold. And so we end up with, which answer choice being correct, We'd have a shift to the right in the demand curve for Hondas and a higher price for Hondas. Um, when I see people mess this up, when I've had students mess this up in the past, they said a shift to the right in the demand curve for Hondas and lower prices. And that's exactly, if you put that answer choice, that's exactly why I want you to draw it. Because you, in that case, someone said the demand increased like they should have, but they probably didn't draw it so they didn't see that, oh, price went up. They're just thinking, oh, price must have gone down because people are buying more because it's cheaper. No, no, no. It's comparatively cheaper before, and now that the demand increases, prices are going up. Great job, children. Good luck on your assignment today.